Kia ora koutou, ko kawatana hou, ko taranaki te maunga, ko waitara te awa, ko te ati awa te iwi, ko aute te waka, no taranaki a hou. Kia ora and welcome to my instructional video on how to do projection mapping with live cameras. Before we get into the mapping itself, I'm going to set up my stage. And I've decided to use these polystyrene boxes here. Pretty cool. On one side it's just plain white. And on the other side I've got these squares. Now I'm going to stack these on top of each other, either side of the DJ. And then in the middle I'm going to use this thing called an Olga kit. Let's go check that out. So this is called an Olga kit. It's a projection mapping stage kit I bought from France about a year ago. I'm going to use this as my centerpiece for the projection mapping show. Once we've set up our stage props, this is what it's going to look like. I've got my polystyrene boxes either side of the DJ. I've got my Olga kit here in the middle as the centerpiece. And in front of the DJ, I've just got plain polystyrene. What I'm going to do here is put the camera angles right on the front so people can see what's going on up here. Uh, the equipment I'll be using is this Epson projector, this Canon camera, this Blackmagic Intensity Extreme box, and three other cameras, an iPhone camera, an iPad camera, and the camera on my MacBook Pro. Now this Blackmagic Intensity Extreme box is really useful. Basically, you can take any HDMI signal, feed it through your computer, have it coming out live, instant, boom. And I'll be using it with uh, Canon, so I've got one really, really crisp picture and three other Wi-Fi cameras that can be moving around. And finally, one last thing, the projector. We just need to put it in a position where it's hitting all the faces of the projection mapping stage kit. Doesn't matter if it's on an angle, as long as all the faces are getting hit with light. That looks pretty good. I've opened up our projection mapping software. It's called HeavyM. Now before we get into the actual mapping itself, I'm just going to go over HeavyM and its functions. At the top of the screen, there are four shapes. You can click and drag any of the shapes into the project. All the shapes have points. The points are both clickable and draggable. Now the idea is to click and drag the points to match the real world object that you're trying to map. At the top right hand side there's a magnet. This is important. If you turn the magnet on and click a point and move it close to another point it'll snap to that point. This is very useful in speeding up your mapping process. At the bottom of the screen is a sequencer and a microphone input on off switch. On the right hand side we have the effects and we have layers. One last thing I have to show you in this app and that is the player. If you click and drag the player on you'll get another option screen coming up on the left here in which you are able to choose what that player will be. For instance, it could be a camera, it could be a siphon input, it could be a shader, or it could just be a PNG file. Right, now it's time to get into the mapping. I'm going to open up a new project in HeavyM. I'm going to start by dragging some squares into the project so I can map the cubes. Now a useful shortcut here, if you want to copy and paste a shape, you just click on it and then press Command D.
Now once I've mapped all four cubes, I'm gonna click on all of them while pressing Command and group them into group one. Next, let's do the triangles. Perfect. Once I've done all the triangles, I'm going to group that into group two. And finally, we'll map the front of the DJ box. Great. Now let's add some effects to the different layers. Let's add some effects to the cubes. We're going to choose the cube layer. We're going to choose a color fill. And we're going to put on random. Random colors. We're going to add an effect here. Looks pretty cool. And one more effect just to make it look a little bit more funky. Brilliant. On to the triangles now. I'm going to choose a fill. I'm going to choose an effect. And we'll also add a borderline. Great, simple as that, it looks perfect. Now let's do the front of the DJ box. Great, we've set up our first sequence. Now, it's time to set up our cameras. But before we get into that, I'm just gonna save this project and quit Heavy M. Moving on now, and I'm going to open up the next app that we'll be using. This is called Koji. I'll be using this application to feed the wireless cameras and my Canon camera back into Heavy M. I'll also be using an artist logo and animating it with this program. I've got the artist logo here. 
It's a PNG file. I've got four different versions of it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new clip synth. I'm going to get the artist logo and I'm going to drag and drop it onto the clip synth. I'm going to do it four times. There's 16 banks. So I'm going to fill them all up. Next, I'm going to open up a sequencer. Now to animate the logo, I'm going to turn the sequencer on. I'm going to select all the tracks. And then you can see, when I drag the driver through, you can see it animating. Well, just changing really. We'll animate it a little bit further down the track. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on the driver and I'm going to click measure position and turn it on. And now it's just going to cycle through the different PNG files, which is pretty cool. Now we're going to add a little bit more to that. I'm going to scale it down a bit. And then we're going to animate the rotation on the y-axis, the z-axis, and the x-axis. So I'm going to right click, and I'm going to go LFO, and I'm going to go Sin8. Oops. Sin8. I'm going to turn it on. And I'm going to do the same with y. LFO. And we'll go sin saw down eight and X out of bow sin four. It's a little bit too fast, so I'll change the LFO. To try eight. Don't like that one, we'll change it to Sin 16. Cool. Now let's add an effect to that. We're going to go up to Interface, New Effect Chain, right click on there, and we'll, we'll find a glitch effect. We're going to turn the FX chain in, on under clip synth. Cool, I like that. Okay, once I'm happy with my logo, it's time to add the cameras. I'm going to go interface, new siphon source, and I'm going to do that four times. It's got a little bit of animation going to it and some effects, so yeah, it's looking pretty cool. For the cameras, I'll be using Airbeam. Airbeam is an iOS app that allows you to stream video via Wi-Fi into any program you want. So I'm going to open up Airbeam. And I'm going to open up two instances of Airbeam. The reason why is because one will be streaming and the other one will be receiving and sending. Next, I'll open up Airbeam on my iPhone. Now, as with all Siphon enabled apps, for it to work, the window needs to remain open. So it's important that you don't close the windows. Once we've got our wireless cameras all set up, it's time to plug in our Canon camera. 
I've got my trusty 700D here with my Blackmagic Intensity Extreme box plugged in via Thunderbolt to my Mac. We're going to open up another program now called Black Siphon. I'm going to select Intensity Extreme and I'm going to select 1080i 59 frame rate. Cool. Going back to Koji now, let's sort out the cameras. If I go Siphon Source 1, we can make that the iPad camera. Siphon Source 2 can be the iPhone. Siphon Source 3 can be my MacBook Pro. And Siphon Source 4 can be Black Siphon. On the master mixer of Koji, I'm going to select All Composite. I'm going to turn it on. And I'm going to cycle through all the camera angles I've got set up. Perfect. Now the Canon camera seems to be a little bit smaller than the other cameras. So I'll go back to the Siphon Source setting and I'll just scale it up so it matches. Now there's just one last thing to do before we go back to Heavy M. And that's to map the MIDI of my MIDI controller so I can change the camera angles without actually having to touch my computer. To do that, what I'm going to do is go into Koji, select Maps, select Show Edit Map, then click on the camera I want to map back to the button on my controller. And I'll do all four just like that. Then turn Maps off. Now, when I press the controller button, I'm changing the camera angles. Taking it one step further, I'm going to put the artist logo on each of the cubes on the outside. Now, instead of choosing the master mixer, I'm going to choose the clip synth. Nice. I'll duplicate it for the other side. Duplicate it again for the middle. And there you go. Projection mapping with a live camera. Three wireless cameras and one Canon.